Today we are here at the Teaching Garden at Woodward Park, and if you haven't been here in a while, there are a lot of things going on, including this butterfly garden that we are standing in. Today joining us is Andy Fesco, who is the Director of Horticulture here. Andy, thanks so much for having us out. Thanks for coming. It's summer is heating up, right? Yeah, it's a quick summer. <laughs> and so we've got butterflies flying all around us, and I just love this uh, beautiful butterfly garden that you have here. And of course, it's just getting started in the season, so things are going to warm up. Yep. But tell us a little bit about what went into the thought process of developing a butterfly garden. Well, all our gardens here at the Teaching Garden it, uh, showcase what you, people can do in their own homes. Mm -hmm. And about seven years ago, this piece of real estate outside of the gates came available. And one of the more popular things that's kind of coming about is people are really interested in gardening for insects and uh, contributing to their local ecological health. Absolutely. So what are some of those things that we need to be providing to those pollinators and insects? So there's three big things. You want uh, food sources for the caterpillars. You want nectar sources, so the flowers mm -hmm. for the adult butterflies and bees. And then you want places that they can overwinter and okay. stay warm throughout the winter. And a lot of times that one in particular people don't think about. Yeah. So we clean out the garden, right? <laughs> right. And people think about the monarch butterfly. Now they migrate, but most of our native insects and pollinators will hibernate over winter in our own yards. All right. So what are some of the plants that fit those um, categories for us here? So one of the ones that a lot of people will know is our milkweed, and mm -hmm. that's the foraging source for the caterpillar of the monarch. Mm -hmm. And so we have two or three different types of milkweed in this garden. So we've got some African varieties of gonfo carpus and then some native varieties like a swamp milkweed, Asclepia okay. syriaca. Mm -hmm. Anything that flowers really is going to be a great nectar food source for the adult bees and butterflies, just like this Amsonia here. Uh, even though the flowers appear small and it's still a beautiful plant to us, um, different sized pollinators are going to find those flowers and really enjoy the taste right. of them. And I think a lot of times the flower is the important part, but yes. we want things eating our vegetation in here, right? That's the forage that you're talking about with caterpillars. Yes. So for so long we thought like, oh, we don't want any bugs on our plants because <laughs> otherwise they're going to be ugly. Right. But the whole point in this garden, at least, is for the caterpillars and the other bugs to be eating our plants and be a part of one big ecosystem. Right. And so a lot of those finer leaf foliage plants like fennel and dill or some parsley, I think, are some of the good yeah. ones. Your herbs, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just like we find them tasty, the caterpillars do too. So we've got uh, bronze fennel in here, we've mm -hmm. got some rue, we've got dill, uh, we have Italian parsley and curly leaf parsley, and those are favorites of the swallowtail. It's literally a smorgasbord for yes. them here. Yeah. And so what about some of those overwintering plants that you mentioned are important? So we have some uh, native grasses, specifically a north wind switchgrass, mm -hmm. um, that they look pretty in the winter when, before you cut them back, mm -hmm. and actually the caterpillars that last generation of caterpillar in the winter will crawl down in the grasses and spend the entire winter there and that gives them enough uh, shelter from the cold winds and whatnot to make it so that they last until the next spring. Okay well I know a lot of uh, pollinator gardens also usually incorporate some sort of moisture source for those. Do you have that as well? Here? Yeah so we have what we're, we've called ponding stations so our uh, crafting volunteers actually mm -hmm. built these. They're made out of a little dish like you would put under a pot and they've got a little gravel in there and you, as you're watering or when the rain it collects some water because you know all animals need some, some water. Right. Um, some of our rock features um, also were selected when this garden was designed so that they would hold water after the rain or after a watering. Okay, so it's not like you have to bring in a whole water garden no. or anything, just kind of create those depressions. Right, somewhere you for don't them. want them so big that then they're promoting one of our not so favorite insects, mosquitoes. <laughs> right, but, absolutely. Yeah. So your title is, you know, the teaching garden here. Tell me a little bit about some of the programs that happen in the education that might happen in this garden. So it's a little twofold. It's teaching in the sense that uh, any member of the public can come see us Tuesday through Saturday, nine to four. And all throughout the garden, there's different areas that you can look at and uh, figure out Maybe you have a sunny spot or a shady spot or you want to put a vegetable garden in or an herb garden. You can come here and get ideas for your own yard. Uh -huh. But it's also mostly maintained uh, by volunteers. And these volunteers don't just show up one day and dig in the dirt. They go through multi-week trainings. Um, and so this fall we'll be relaunching our training program and our volunteers will go through almost 70 hours of training. And then they give uh, us time back as a trade-off for that. Well, it's a beautiful garden here, and I would encourage anybody that's in the Tulsa area to come over here to the Teaching Garden at Woodward Park to enjoy the beauty. Thank you so much, Andy. Thanks, Casey.
We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.